I was trying to plan out this video earlier. I was like, ah, there's so much to take in. Look at my room, hold up. But there's just so many things in my room with so many different stories that I want to share and tell and discuss and, but it's like, where do I even start? Essentially being in this environment makes me excited about life because I have memories and artifacts that trigger cues that remind me of times when I felt amazing about life. Not that I don't now, but specific moments trigger certain feelings of nostalgia that sort of bring back that feeling and it puts me in a flow state in this environment, in this room, that makes me excited about life all the time. So I'm sort of like setting up a room that triggers me to be really happy and excited about things by specifically arranging it in a way that supports that way of thinking. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, now that I've explained why I created my room to look like this or how I designed it, or I guess why I designed it and the purpose and function it serves and why I don't have a blank room, I'm gonna try to casually take you guys around from the beginning of my room to the end and sort of like this circle motion and just going through and if I see something that sparks a story, I'm gonna share it. Let's go. So the first thing I see when I enter my room is this little Moose Crossing from Canada sign. I spent five summers living in Montreal when I was a kid and Montreal reminds me of this sort of like adventurous feeling when I was a kid where I would go to these camps where a lot of the kids spoke French and I didn't really understand what was going on but I still went there and I was just completely out of my comfort zone but I felt like I was in my own world there and it sort of takes me back to those younger days when I was just a free-spirited kid. And then right above it, there's this painting that I made when I was a kid because one time I was painting and I had the paintbrush and I accidentally like tapped it and it like did this splatter thing. I was like, whoa, that looks really cool. And basically I thought I invented some like new style of art and I was gonna be like the next Picasso. <laughs> so on this wall right here, I just have backpacks and hats. To be honest, I don't really wanna get into like the backpacks or just like backpack. All right, so these are my shoes behind me. I sort of have like a sweet tooth, but for vintage Nike running shoes, the design is just like, Sets off these reactors in my brain. Anyways, I love it. These are my personal favorites. These are the pre-Montreal version. Um, we also have the blue and red, and then dinosaur Nikes that I made myself with some patches, which I think are pretty cool. These are like my favorite pair. Actually, I just said these are my favorite pair. <laughs> Lyrical Lemonade, big inspiration. Indoor track MVP last year. And then Galga box. These are some shoe boxes. So some Carhu and then Nike. More Nike up there. I like hold some supplies up here in case I ever need it. Then up here we have two model cars. Around the outside I have some postal service stickers and then some flamingo string lights. Roy Purdy glasses. Maybe I'll just wear these the rest of the video. <laughs> um, anyway. Nike B True box. I like the rainbow design. Um, I found this on the side of the road because I thought it looked cool. Perspectopia tag. And then these ones I ironed on a sea turtle patch. I bought two of these. One's like a rugged pair, one's like a nicer, cleaner pair. These are my Nike Off-White Waffle Racers. And I bought these for myself when I hit 100K on YouTube. It's sort of like a present for myself. All right, so moving down, I have this container where I have some like boxes of liquid IV that are empty. I was thinking about throwing them away, but I sort of like the design of the box for some reason, so I just haven't thrown it away. And I have a chess set. I got really into chess this summer, and I played like 20 hours a week on online chess apps. I got really, really, really into it, and I had to delete the app because I was starting to get obsessed. Whoops. <laughs> um, I have all my masks. Got some more like pretty artistic masks. Black one. Yeah, anyway, camera lens box, so I thought it looked cool. A rocket, which it actually has a rocket inside. I bought this at Goodwill for like, I think, yeah, $249, <laughs> and it works. I bought these from some like Chinese website. It's supposed to be like a mini sewing kit. I actually have one right here. Um, I still haven't tried it out yet, but I thought I'd just buy one, or I bought like three. <laughs> uh, I don't know really why, but I thought they were cool. 14,000 things to be happy about. And I bought 10 copies of that book. I felt this like urge, I think I was gonna even make a video about giving them away. 
but I've decided to keep them and I guess I just give them to friends or people just as like a little gift I don't know so I have 10 copies of those <laughs> but yeah never hurts to have uh, a reminder of things to be happy about and then the Perspectopia box from this collection and then the box YouTube sent me with my plaque moving down uh, we have my fancier shoes if I give a presentation in school or I just feel like flexing on everyone, I wear these. These used to be my dad's. And I wore these in France like every single day. And I cut up a can and I glued it on. <laughs> this one sort of fell off. Uh, whoops. Yeah. I keep a mallet in my room too because like you just never know when you need a mallet. I almost can't believe I forgot this, but if we go down to the floor, We'll see the great wall of post-it yeah so I have a lifetime supply of post-it notes because they sponsored me for a campaign for positivity post-it and I guess that was the name of the campaign positivity post-it all right moving along we have this thing I wrote the first class I got a B in was art how can you get a B in art I wish I got an F for f the rules art is art all right so this is the first story and it involves what I like to call the frickin'. This. This is the frickin'. Uh, it's the combination of the words frog and chicken. So this took place in my eighth grade year of art. Um, I think our final project was to take like a milk jug can so this was originally a milk jug and we had to turn it into some sort of like animal so I thought it'd be creative and turn it into a frog chicken which it has like wings for like, a chicken it has like the cluck and like, it's even sparkly I don't know if you can see that anyway my teacher decided to give me an 80 on this and I'm still salty about it I'm still don't even really want to talk about it because it brings up these emotions that this is like the sexiest thing you've ever seen and you can't even deny it because it just is like come on look at this cluck 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 frog plus chicken freaking like this was genius and i was ahead of my time and she was just trying to hold me back but i'm not gonna let her um anyway i got an 80 on this which means i ended up getting a b in the class and yeah, not to be like that kid who like cares about grades because I just made a whole video not caring about grades, but I think it was the first B I got in school. I was still in middle school, so it didn't really matter. But anyway, I was pretty upset about that, so I wrote that on a piece of paper. So it's sort of like a, a reminder of who cares about grades, who cares about rules, how can you even like get a B in art? Art is just art. So yeah, that's the long story of why I wrote that and put it on my wall as a reminder that don't worry about it. In my mind, I got like 150 on this project. I mean, come on. So if you want to help support the freaking cause, you can leave a like on this video. And every like is an extra point of extra credit for this project, um, the freaking project, so that I can get an A in art back in eighth grade. The freaking and I, we both sincerely appreciate your support. We still love you, even though you got me a B in art class. Anyway. MRTV, if you know, you know. Fleur de Lis from like Quebec. Uh, I found this on the side of the road. I think this is my dad's. And yeah, I just think this sort of looks cool. I need to actually fill this up. And uh, this was my boot when I had a really freak accident over the summer when I was running and a horse came on the trail and I basically almost got attacked because it jumped in the air and it tried to like pounce on me I think and I tried to get out of the way and I ended up twisting my foot and I missed six weeks of running so this is sort of like um a memory of that really weird odd experience that happened and so I just kept the boot I guess I don't know why but it's here hey boot <laughs> all right so here's my chair in my backpack what is a chair what is a chair so I'm just gonna sit down in my chair and uh, I wrote that one day because I was looking at my chair and I thought to myself, what is a chair? It sounds like a really silly question. I was just thinking like, what is a chair? So I wrote it down on the thing and I put it on my chair. So whenever I'm about to sit on my chair, it's a reminder to just question things and to, I don't know, 
not get so used to chairs just being chairs and letting chairs being chairs without questioning. And if I'm being honest, I don't really know. I still haven't quite figured out the philosophical meaning of why I'm questioning the chair in the first place, but I'm getting there. Maybe someday I'll realize or figure out why I was questioning the chair being a chair, why I just didn't let the chair be a chair. So I'll get back to you guys on that one, but for now I still don't know, but what is a chair? Let me know in the comments what you think a chair is. All right, so here we are in my closet now. As you may be able to tell, I'm pretty into clothing and fashion and design and just art in general. So clothing is very important for me and it's a way of um, expressing my feelings, my thoughts, my personality, I guess. And yeah, my closet is full. Ooh, excuse me, I have things that do that. So I would show you guys my clothing, but that's like a whole separate entity that like I don't even want to get into right now because that's like, that's like a whole nother video. So in the future, I might make a video about my clothing, but that's like a whole nother philosophy and topic and why I wear certain clothes. So yeah, I'm gonna save that or hit pause for now, but just know this is where all my clothing is and it's important and special to me. All right, so moving on, a little map that looks cool. Porsche up there because I love the design and I don't know, a little bit of inspiration when I'm like laying in bed and I can look up. Um, Lyrical Lemonade, I thought this looked cool. So I just put it up there. Recycling is good for the environment. Then these were the notes I had for one of my favorite videos. Yeah, so I just put them on my wall as a reminder that I worked really hard on this video. Moving down, we have an illegal device. It says, this terrible device was found at the UNC Davis Library. Don't do it, kids. No smoking. Yeah, so I have like a vaping device in my room uh, because I found it when I was studying at a library and I put it in a bag and I sealed it and I put it on my wall. Um, and I don't really know why I did it, but I felt an urge to like trap it in a bag as like evidence almost. I don't even know. Um, but at least in America, vaping was like a pretty bad like epidemic or pandemic, whatever the correct scientific nomenclature is or what am I even saying? Gosh, kids used to vape a lot in high school and they still do unfortunately. Freshman, sophomore, even junior year. A lot of kids vaped in high school and it was sad because they're addicted to nicotine. And anyways, I've seen a lot of people struggle a lot with it. And yeah, I guess I just put it on my wall. It's there as an artifact, as a memory for that time I found a vape in the library. Yeah, not everything in my room has like a deep meaning sometimes it's just a memory or a funny moment or I don't even know <laughs> anyways this was my childhood and I love the design and the aesthetic it just looks beautiful and it fits into my room really well my electric guitar hanging up on the wall the cross country boys got me this as a gift it's pretty awesome some lavender from X where I lived in France some counselor stickers when I was a counselor at the art center. Some various race bibs from races I've done, like this was in Montreal. A Porsche poster, another race bib. The Beatles, no explanation needed. San Francisco, I love the aesthetic of this. Some more race bibs. Drink Coca-Cola, I found this in Montreal when I was living there one of the summers at a garage sale and I brought it back. I love this whole aesthetic section of my room. I have my acoustic guitar as well. I also have this shelf cabinet thing. Um, the freaking legend, the king, I've already introduced you to him. Another lyrical lemonade can. Uh, some books, Dr. Seuss, one of my favorite books of all time. Other places you'll go. A thousand places to see before you die. Whoops. Anyway, this is a really cool book. A lot of places to see. Anyway, this book is like a cool reminder of, of all the places there are in the world to see and experience. Um, this is also pretty cool. This is the town I live in and it's some old photos of the town. Yeah, it's just cool to see what my town used to look like. So yeah, I just like having this. Moving down, this is a bit unorganized. Whoops cool old camera that my friends Bess and Becky got me. Shout out to them if you're watching this. Thank you guys. This is just a little bit of a mess. Just pretend you didn't see that. A uh, yoga ball or like half a yoga ball for exercises. Um, a new drone I got. This is like the remnants or pieces of a new drone I got. You guys will see that soon. Moving over here. Um, this is a project I did for drafting 
or it was my architecture class actually, but it's the floor plans to a house. I wasn't supposed to print it with color, but I accidentally did, but it looks cool. Um, so yeah, throwback to the days when I was really interested in architecture. Not that I'm not now, but like, I don't want to be an architect. <laughs> my dad painted this for me for my 14th birthday, I'm pretty sure. 14th or 15th, I don't remember. But yeah, I think I've gotten a lot of comments of, from people saying it was like a Shawn Mendes tattoo or something. So I don't know exactly where it comes from. Um, it's a nice sort of centerpiece to my room. The trees, the moon, the city outline, and it forms an acoustic guitar. Pretty cool, I think. So New York Times articles, I still have to fill that area up. And then if I bring you guys over to this corner, Steve Prefontaine, big inspiration. He's a runner. Um, he's actually one of the first people to wear the Nike shoes and to promote them. Anyway, Nike probably wouldn't exist today if it wasn't for Steve Prefontaine, American distance running legend, big inspiration. So when I go to bed tonight, or when I go to bed every night, it's just there as a reminder of that. A lot more race bibs, and then like a little inspiration board I made for myself about running. And yeah, there's still some space to fill in this area of my room that I haven't filled up quite yet. But yeah, I'm in no rush to force it. So this is my bed. I built it over the summer. Uh, it's an Ikea bed. I'm really proud that I built it actually. It took me the whole day because I wasn't really that good at it, but I figured it out and it's kind of fun. This is a quilt that my grandma made out of my dad's old t-shirts. A lot of them are like cycling t-shirts. Anyway, this is my bed and it has four drawers which I've converted the bottom to now to clothing and sweatshirts because I've run out of closet space because I have a lot of clothes. Um, so the bottom two are just clothing now. They used to be like supplies for my business, but I moved that to the attic upstairs and also the living room downstairs. Um, but the top two are some like poly mailer bags for shipping stuff out, some labels for the crew necks, some old for Spectopia socks, some of the new labels for the hoodies. And if I ever customize clothing or want to mess around with the project, all of my supplies are in here. You have like different patches um, for Spectopia designs. Just a lot of stuff to play around with. Fabrics and whatnot. So when I'm in the early stages of designing a collection, I like to experiment around with a lot of more abstract things. I'll buy a bunch of blanks and then I'll use my iron board, which is back there, and I'll just feel really creative one night and I'll just start making designs and I'll use all of this to make the designs and eventually I'll refine it down to the final design that I'll end up using for the collection. But yeah, this is sort of just a fun way for me to be creative and to play around and yeah. So that's sort of what this drawer is. Creative stuff for designing clothes. So this is also more supplies. Um, a lot of the vinyl I use to make my designs stored in here. We have some like stickers, more vinyl, but this just holds a lot of like just, yeah, general supplies. And then I have some boxes with stickers. Uh, so that's my bed. And then underneath here, we have Epsom salts for my legs when they're sore. Just like workout stuff, like a yoga mat. Um, I just got this for Christmas, actually. But it's a foam roller, but it vibrates. And then right here, I have all the books that I read this month. So Atomic Habits, I really recommend that. I'd read Huck Finn for school. Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Absolute classic book, really good. Just finished The 4 Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. And then Going to Pieces Without Falling Apart. Mark Epstein, also really good about Buddhist thought and meditation. And then I have this light, sort of like industrial, but I have it in case I need it and it's pretty warm. And then this is a little pouch. That right there's, I think it's a French tradition. Anyway, when I was a kid, uh, I'd have to put my teeth in there when they fell out and then the tooth fairy would come and the money would be in that little bag. Um, so yeah, all of my teeth went into that 
when I was a kid, so that's like a nice little childhood memory or thing to look back upon. This right here is also a nice little memory of when I was a boy, the smile on my face, having fun. There's my mom, some like birds. Yeah, so the books I'm currently reading, I guess I'll just lay them out. Um, indistractable, really, really good book. Um, I've had this recommended to me by a lot of people, The 48 Laws of Power. So I'm finally getting through to reading it, but it's just like really thick and dense. It's taking me a while, um, but so far so good. It's actually really interesting. Um, Edward Bellamy, Looking Backwards. No one actually recommended this to me, but I learned about it in history class and how he like predicted a lot of the future. Um, so I'm gonna get to reading that soon. And then I was interested in Enneagrams. So I've been flipping through this recently and I'll probably get to it after the others. And then six pack of Play-Doh. And then on the other side are some other books that I'm reading or getting to next. Inward, really good so far. I'm trying to get better with my writing. So Elements of Style on writing well. Shoe Dog, which I've heard from a lot of people is great. Zero to One by Peter Thiel, so far pretty good. And this was a gift from my friend Beckett for Christmas and I look forward to reading it. Also underneath is a book, Art to Life by Blue Boy, who's a very talented artist. All right, so that covers basically all of this. Um, 8, 15, 20, I had this moment like, I think it was after I posted a video, or maybe I read someone's comment, and I realized, like, holy cow, 